All right, guys, welcome to this uh, real-time ray tracing uh, sneak peek. Okay, so um, this environment has literally nothing, uh, but no lights, but we have a lot of modular pieces actually. Okay, so uh, they're all static for now, but static should be able to be supported by real-time ray tracing. Uh, if you drag in uh, point light, you can see uh, in real-time ray tracing mode, uh, the light are casting normal shadows in the default settings. But one thing you do notice is that you can zoom into those reflective areas. You can feel like there are some noise going on. Okay, noise effect going on. That's because the real time time ray tracing uh, sampling is a little low. Okay. Uh, anyway, so. Let me grab all my models and just select them all and make them uh, mobile so that we can get rid of that warning and we can take a look at what we have. Okay, so we have the point light and it's casting with this really harsh shadow. Now, because it's ray traced, we can make the point light bigger and it's gonna cost, uh, actually cause the shadow to be more soft. So I'm gonna go to the source radius and make it bigger. Okay, you can see when I make it big enough, you can already see how the shadow evolves to the back. Okay, you can see it's it's still kind of like really sharp in the beginning, but it falls off to the back really nicely and it, it bleed and blend to a really soft shadow. Okay, now that's because of the uh, the point light is doing real time ray tracing shadow. You can also make it movable just to be able to visualize it without the warning. <laughs> All right. Can take a look at that uh, here. Maybe um, let's take a look at some really interesting uh, example here. If I go ahead and go grab in a sphere and put it in there, okay. you can see the shadow are getting sharper when I'm getting close and gets more blurrier. Actually, get more. Or let's just say it changes, right? Uh, so when I'm far away, I, I'm expecting to see it becomes a little bit more sharper. Actually, that's right because it's uh, uh the light then appears to be smaller. You make the the sphere uh, make the radius smaller. You can see that effect again. So harsh shadow and soft shadow based on the radius. Really cool, right? So I'm gonna go delete that. Another benefit of real-time ray tracing is that we can use uh, reflections. And the reflection will be 100% accurate. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Uh, I'm gonna go drag in a cube in here. Okay. All right. Just as normal, you can make anything really uh, metallic and no roughness. And you can get a mirror material. So I'm gonna drag in one I have already and see, yeah, that's gonna be how it looks like. Okay, basically this material just have uh, one metallic, zero roughness, one specular, and white as its color, and we got this really nice result. Uh, we could, of course, make make it a little bit rougher. You can see we got this blurry result. You can also see when it does that, you can see a lot of issue here. You can see the sampling issue over there. Okay, let me grab my objects and then drag them up to the outside of the building <laughs> so that we can see it. Okay, you can kind of like see it's getting a bit noisy over here. Okay, now to be able to crack that quality, we can go to create a post-processing volume here. And that kind of helps. So if you go use the post-processing volume, you can search for reflection. And you can turn on the retracing reflection uh, sample. You can change that to something like three. Okay, that should make it look better. Or even higher, <laughs> that's too much. Okay, so it's trying to do better uh, in this case. But still, it's gonna be a lot of calculation to work. Okay, anyway. I'm gonna lower that down. Uh, oh, actually, it's not doing that yet because uh, uh, I haven't changed it to full extent. So I'm gonna go down to the post processing volume and make sure that it's infinite extent. Okay. Oops. Now it's getting really slow because it's trying to sample more. Uh, my system is really 
slowing down now even my cursor is like jumping <laughs> okay because i'm asking it to uh, also do like super high sampling should actually go take that let me search for that over here that, yeah that's 62 sampling it's too much let me change that back to three okay you can see that's performs just a little bit better it's a little bit cleaner and crank that up and let it sample more but you can already see that just eight samples per pixel, or actually 14, uh, the system is getting really slow. Um, of course, you cannot blame for that <laughs> because it's real-time ray traced. And I have a lot of reflective areas. So yeah, of course, it's going to be really slow. Um, so nonetheless, real-time ray tracing is not going to be able to give you a very good real-time result if you demand the highest quality without any noise. Okay, So use it in the conservative way. And as long as um, and as the, the the official documentation says, uh, it's not the time to use it like for real production yet. It's just for you to preview. So don't don't try to or don't assume that you can use it like for your real production yet. Okay. Anyway, so that's one thing we can do, right? We can do roughness. We can make it reflect really nicely. Uh, but there's another thing we have to take a look at. Look at if I have a copy of the mirror, you can see it doesn't really trace each other. That's because the tracing bounces are not high enough. So to be able to to achieve that, you have to also go to the post processing volume and look for reflection again. And we can change the max bounce to something higher, like maybe two. Then you can see they're they're tracing each other one more time, and then we can go for even three, and we have one more. And you can go all the way up to 10. And you can see again, my system got really lagging. Okay, so my graphic card is RTX 2080. Uh, so that should be on the higher end, but still like it's not capable of calculating this. Okay, uh, maybe maybe that's because I have too much reflective areas. Uh, maybe that's, that's because of that, it's tracing too much. We could um, grab the post-processing volume uh, let me actually lower that down to one. Let's take a look at the performance if I just isolate this this scenario. So I'm gonna look for that. Okay, and I can hit F. Oops, not there. Uh, out, out three. Okay, so that I can see just the structure without any lighting. Let me drag that guy in and put it in where the Letting is which is gonna be over here, right? If I were to let it just affect that area, let's see what we got. Okay, so I'm gonna go check out the full extent or infinite extent and turn on ridges. Now it's actually already turned on. Uh, so let me try that. Um, change that to maybe four. And then we can out four to go back to the lighting. Okay. I'll grab the post processing. Is it doing anything? It's not really retracing that much uh, in this case. Oh, that's the sample. Sorry, <laughs> the bounces four. Ah, uh, you can see it's still kind of like really slow. So I guess uh yeah, that's just the performance that it has to do to calculate that. So it's. It's not there yet. Okay. Anyway, so I'm gonna lower that down. <laughs> That's probably too much. Anyways, so the recommendation is you don't really use it uh, on like a in an environment that has a lot of reflections, or you avoid having that kind of like a situation that can help you to get better result. Anyway, so that should be. I think the benefits of real-time retracing, other than that, I think it's, you know, does it really do that much better than baked? I'm, I'm not sure, I think, but using the old school rasterization, baking, those kind of things, it's it's actually doing, it was just doing fun. The real-time retracing just, I think the biggest benefit is you have this really realistic kind of like a reflection and there's no arrow over there, right? Like even that little corner there. And the shadow is getting better also. But other than that, I'm I'm not sure if this is really worth it yet, unless it gives you very good quality, right? 
But for now, uh, there are noises somewhere here and there, you can see, right? And it's low performance. So we still need to wait for uh, like five years or so to, to get, get there, right? The performance of the hardware is still fairly slow. Um, and the real-time ray tracing is pretty demanding. Anyway, so we can also take a look at a different lighting, maybe for the directional light, for example, and to change it to also mobile. Okay, this is also all new to me too. And unfortunately, there is literally no good documentation on this uh, at all. So we just have to try it ourselves. I'm gonna turn off that locking for rotation. Oops. Grab my light and rotate it. Okay, so for the directional light, it also can be uh, having the uh, the soft effect on the shadow as long as you drag up the source angle. Okay. The higher it is, the more blurrier it's going to get when it falls off. Okay. Alright, the default setting there is actually the sun's source angle, so yeah, that's what you wanted to have if you're making a sun. Okay, and it's all real time. So I can drag in maybe a skylight. Uh, that means I need to have a sky, maybe a atmospheric fog can do a similar job. <laughs> uh, and also I can grab the sunlight and make it to be the sun. So check that out to control the fog. Okay, now I can start rotating uh, the sunlight and take a look at the environment. Uh, yeah, for the, for the skylight, we want to also try real-time real ray tracing. I'm going to change it to Movo, and then also search for uh, Retrace. I believe we have to also cast the Retrace Shadow to make this work properly. Okay. And again, because of the tracing limitations, like some of the areas, like some of the materials, <laughs> I think I make them uh, too much reflective, and they're not being able to capture the reflection just because there are not enough bounces. <laughs> so some of those things are getting dark in a weird way. Okay, but it's ray trace nonetheless. All right, cool. Uh, so we could also do like a hybrid of those two things. So we don't have ray tracing for this light and we make it static. Okay. And then we can make all the models, all the models here static, right? So they're all static model now. And we can maybe also drop in a uh, reflection capture. Okay. And I believe this one doesn't have any retrace settings. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't have that. Okay. So this light is now static and it doesn't have any retrace setting. Okay. So that means it should be, I mean, let's leave that out to, to let it not, let it not sample anything. Okay. So it's just the sunlight is retraced and this one is not, okay, this one. So we do have to bake it then. Let's try to do that. I'm gonna go just out, uh, control shift and semi column to bake it. Okay, uh, so uh, in Epic Games recommendation is also you uh, you try to uh, do a hybrid of baked lighting and real-time ray tracing so that you got both words, okay, all right. Maybe I can make the reflection a bit stronger. Let me go change the reflection brightness. Okay. And I can maybe go also go to the post processing volume. Uh, maybe I can crank up the darkness a little bit more. Uh, so I can go look for, let me try to change the bounces to three to have more bounces and then uh, make sure that it does have full extent. Okay, so that, that way we're having a more accurate reflection result. You can see things are getting brightened up. Okay, that's more accurate result now. I can go uh, close that, and then maybe we can do some processing here also to, yeah, we can turn on global illumination. <laughs> it's also something we can try to do. Turn on indirect lighting. Oh, I can enable ray traced uh, global illumination. <laughs> can do max bounces and samples. <laughs> too much, too much to calculate. But we can crank up the indirect lighting to make it stronger. I uh, just wanted to brighten this environment up. Okay. 
Anyway, so that's that's the hybrid of real time ray tracing and uh, the baked lighting. Uh, we can go maybe let's say the reflection here, although they're really cool, but I have so much reflected areas and they're causing the, re the, the performance to be really low. So I'm going to search for reflection. Okay, I'm going to change the sample per pixel to zero. To zero. I cannot really go zero, actually. I should be able to go zero, isn't it? Mm. Or max bounce is to zero. Yeah, that's telling to not retrace anymore. You can see we're getting uh, just the baked uh, retrace result. Okay. And a baked uh, lighting result. And we can, of course, make it trace maybe twice and take a look at that. Three times. And yeah, so that's going to be real-time retracing. Okay, you can see, well, it's good. It's giving you accurate result. And it's definitely something I want to have eventually in the future to have a better performance. Okay, for now, I think the performance is just really low to be able to represent, uh, to be used in real-time uh, reproduction. Maybe there's some documentation later on that will come out to tell us how to enhance this, but there is no documentation yet to really talk about how to use it properly. So I'm just testing myself. Uh, so maybe it can do better, just I don't know. Um, anyway, so just to compare that, right? This is the one that actually is all baked. So all the things in this environment is all baked. Uh, if you go to the editor, you can see this is 4.21, okay? This is where the this environment was built. You can see, well, we're, we can get pretty decent results uh, by baking it, right? We don't really need to have real-time retracing all the time. And we were able to make really amazing graphic anyways. So I don't think that's a huge, you know, that's going to be like a huge impact on the final graphic. People can do really good graphic already. It's just that extra addition to, you know, uh, accurate reflection and accurate, like, lighting fall-off kind of thing. Uh, well baked is not being able to do that good but uh, i think at least for the artist production like workflow real-time retracing will, will great greatly enhance their their iteration time because they don't have to bake anymore and everything is calculated in a real way so it's it's going to be more accurate it's easier to to adjust uh, but other than that to an artist i think this is not going to be you know, something like you just have to have real-time retracing to make a really good environment. We have been doing really good environment for the longest time, right? So that's not going to be the issue, right? Uh, the issue is still like, uh, you know, not the technique. In most of the cases, it's basically uh, your own art artistical uh, judgment, okay, which will determine how things looks like eventually. All right, but you cannot deny it's the, the really good follow-up of the shadow, you can see how how sharp it is over here right and how does it fall off to the very end this is looking really really good but yeah like i was said what i said earlier um if you wanted to use it use it in a conservative way and also not ready for production and if you're just thinking about getting a new rtx 20 graphic card um and try it i think it's fun but after my own test, um, I'm not going to try to use it in real production either. And I'm I'm thinking maybe, you know, for anyone who just not sure yet, you can skip this version uh, and wait for the next generation of RTX card. And maybe that version will do better. Uh, I think it's still going to be five years or so to get there, to get real-time retracing to be performant. All right, cool. So that's going to be it for the sneak peek of real-time retracing. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.